Hello everyone, today's data science interview question is from Twitch. We'll run you through a step-by-step -step solution using a framework that you can use for any coding question, whether on an interview or on the job. But before we do that, if you want to learn more about data science, hit the subscribe button. Our interview question today is entitled, Viewers Turn Streamers. This is a hard level problem, so if you want to interactively follow along with us, you'll find the link to the question in the description. So the question reads, from users who had their first session as a viewer, how many streamer sessions have they had? Return the user ID and the number of sessions in descending order. In case there are users with the same number of sessions, order them by ascending user ID. To ensure you understand what is being asked, a practice I recommend to all candidates is to restate the question back to the interviewer in your own words and asking about the context of the problem or adding in your own insights about why such an analysis might be needed. After all, you're in the interview not just to show off your SQL skill set, but most importantly, your problem solving skills, wherein having a good grasp of the problem is absolutely crucial. Let's talk about Twitch. Twitch is a live streaming platform for a variety of content, such as esports competitions, video games, and music broadcast. It monetizes the content through subscriptions, in-app purchases, and advertising. Given this type of revenue model, Twitch has to be able to convert their visitors into paying users, that is, through paid subscriptions or in-app purchases, or increase the time that the users spend on the platform, which contributes to Twitch's advertisement revenue. So it is no surprise that the business wants to focus on the number of streamer sessions from users who first arrived in Twitch as a viewer. It signals how effective the platform is in capturing its visitors. If they are targeted in the right way or with the right content, then many of them would come back to the site, translating into high number of repeat visitors, which is nothing but the number of users in the output table. And if these users continue to like what they see on the platform, this will likely increase the number of streamer sessions per user. On the other hand, if these first-time viewers don't have streamer sessions afterwards, it may indicate poor targeting or engagement, which affects Twitch's ability to monetize value. By sharing this with the interviewer, you demonstrate your business acumen as well as the ability to think independently about an analysis assigned, which makes you a very valuable team member. After considering the overall context of the problem, identify what is required and how the output table should look like. In this case, it would consist of two columns, user IDs of the first time viewers with streamer sessions and the corresponding number of sessions they've had. Or to put it simply, the two columns would be selected user IDs and number of streamer sessions. To help you structure your approach and communicate the solution effectively to the interviewer, we recommend that you follow this framework. Exploring the dataset and writing out the approach before coding the solution. So before starting to code, explore the dataset and make sure you understand the columns in each table, their data types, and what the data really represents. There are probably tricks and edge cases, so while doing so, engage the interviewer and ask clarifying questions and explicitly state your assumptions about the data. Then start writing out your approach and outline the steps you would like to take to solve the problem. Don't code yet, just write out your approach as sentences and pseudocode and verify them with the interviewer. This engages the interviewer, creates dialogue and verifies if your logic is correct. Then you can start coding your solution. Now let's explore the data set provided. So the table we've been provided with is Twitch sessions table. It provides various session information like session start and end times, the session ID, the session type, as well as their corresponding user ID for that session. Let's click on the preview button to take a closer look at the table. Now in an actual interview, you typically don't see a preview of the table, but you can ask some clarifying questions with the interviewer or otherwise make assumptions about the dataset provided yourself. You'd want to understand each column, what it represents and what types of values are in it, as well as the relationship between the columns. For example, in our dataset, we need to identify the unique 
types of values under the session type column. Are there a few different session types? How are they encoded? This helps us ensure if we are correctly formulating our filter conditions later on. So in this case, we can pose this question to the interviewer. But in the meantime, if you're practicing on the platform, we can verify these assumptions ourselves. For example, you can write a simple query like this to identify the types of values under a session type column. If we're on the code, we can see that there are two types of values under this column, which is streamer and viewer. Next, we want to investigate the relationship between the different columns. So in our case, there are two important relationships that we need to consider, users and sessions and users and session times. Between users and sessions, we expect that a user can have multiple sessions. In fact, Twitch would hope to see many sessions per user. The other one is users and session times. So imagining how sessions are recorded at a user level, I would also assume that a user can be in only one session at a time. In other words, there are no overlaps in sessions per user. The session has to end before a succeeding one gets started. Let's move on to step two of our framework, which is to write out your approach. With a deeper understanding of our problem and the data, let's now formulate our approach. From a high level, this seems pretty straightforward. We need to, one, select users whose first session is as a viewer, two, count number of streamer sessions these users have had, and show the output table with user ID and number of streamer sessions as columns, and sort this by the number of sessions in descending order first, and then ascending user ID. Let's discuss each step in more detail. Number one, finding users whose first session is as a viewer. Now, this is the lengthier part of the solution, and it can be broken down into A, finding the first session for each user, and B, selecting only users where the first session type is viewer. There are several ways of approaching this, so why don't you pause the video and brainstorm some solutions with me? When you're done, comment it down below. To find the first session, we can use a window function like rank to determine the session order for each user. Provided our assumption of no overlapping sessions is true, row number or dense rank functions would also yield the same result. Then we can determine our selected user population by selecting only those where session order is one and where the session type is viewer. Alternatively, you can also use a minimum function on the session start column to retrieve the first sessions of the users. In either case, the query should yield a list of selected user IDs. Number two, count the number of streamer sessions for these users. Then from the Twitch sessions table, we want to select information relating only to the user IDs from the earlier step and their streamer sessions. We can use a count function to determine the number of streamer sessions per user ID. And lastly, we will sort this by the number of sessions in descending order first, then by ascending user ID. At this point, verify your approach with the interviewer before coding the query. Okay, let's attempt step one using the Windows function approach. So what we want is another column specifying the session order for each user. The rank function or the row number function will also help us to group the data by user ID first. And for each user group, number the entries in order of their session start date. Thus, the first session will appear as one. In this case, if there are no overlapping sessions, as we had assumed earlier, rank function and row number functions will both provide the exact same result. So the query is going to look something like this. We're going to select user ID and session type columns. We're going to use a rank function. And the separate column that we're creating is going to be called stream order from the Twitch sessions table. Now let's run the query and find out if they are being grouped as expected. 
As you can see, the user IDs are grouped and the session types have been displayed and the stream order column numbers the entries in order of their session start date. Then having this as a subquery, let's select the user IDs where the stream order is one and is of the type viewer. Let's run the code and check the preview of the table. Great, this gives us a list of users whose first session was as a viewer. Next, we should identify the streamer sessions of these users. To do so, we need the session type as well as the user IDs from the Twitch sessions table. Notice we only want information regarding user IDs found in these steps and for sessions that are streamer type. So we can use a count function to determine the total number of sessions for these users. Let's upgrade this from Twitch sessions table where session type is streamer and user ID in our previous table. Let's paste the comment over here because this is where we're going to use the count function. We're going to select user ID and the count function as n underscore sessions. We're going to group it by user ID. So let's run the code. And here's the output that we expect, user ID one and three, and the number of streamer sessions they've had. Lastly, we're going to sort our output table. So we're going to use an order by clause. So we've sorted our table in descending order of the number of sessions and ascending user ID. So this is what our final solution looks like. Let's run the code and check it. So this is what our output table looks like this and let's validate it. Great, if this is correct. Now we can go back to the business and report that users one and three had one streamer session each. I want to emphasize that there can be different approaches to a problem. So what's important is that you display your logical thinking and communicate well as you come up with a solution. For example, in step one, we talked about using the minimum function to tackle the problem. This follows the same high level approach we discussed earlier. We can retrieve the user's first sessions with this query. Select user ID minimum on session start as first session from Twitch sessions and group by user ID. Let's run the code and we'll see, we'll see the user IDs listed and their first sessions. Twitch sessions is again our reference table and from this we want to select only the information for first time viewers whose session type is streamer. So using a minimum function our query would look like this. As you can see the query here gets us the same result as the temporary table S1 we created earlier. With this approach the query is longer and maybe slightly harder to decode so what you can do is write it out as a common table expression or CTE, which gives us this query. Let's run the code and check to validate. As you can see, the approach gives us the same result as earlier, which is great. Once in a while, the interviewer can ask some additional questions like oh, what follow-up analysis would you do or what additional information would you ask for? So if you want to stand out during your interviews, make it a practice to go beyond solving the SQL query and show that you understand how it targets a business problem. Again, we are excited to hear your ideas. So why don't you share them in the comment section below? Looking at our results, we have two users with one streamer session each. This seems like a really low number. So what I'll want to check is how many first time viewers there were in total. This will allow me to determine what proportion of the total first time users had a streamer session after. I would also look into our results and ask how many streamer sessions on average do these converted users have? This gives us an idea as to what extent we were able to retain the engagement after initially grabbing the viewer's interest. 
Okay, that was a hard question indeed. Congratulations on solving this problem with us and we hope that you learned something new today. Continue practicing your SQL skills by solving questions on our platform and going through our other mock interview questions in the Strata Scratch YouTube channel. I will leave the links below. See you in our next video.